Welcome to our Church Windows Coffee Break Quick Class User Group Webinar for our Church Windows version 17 Portals and Screens. You know how these classes differ from our other User Group Webinar classes is that we're going to be literally taking as long as a coffee break to get through our material today, so about 20 minutes. Welcome to you all. All right, so as indicated in the webinar, the introduction that you you know and signed up for here, registered for, we're here to look at uh, an advanced uh, preview of our version seven, Church Windows version 1714, which is currently being beta tested now. Uh, depending on how things go, I think we're looking at a release date sometime in late summer, early fall. That's as specific as I can let you know about it for right now. I wish I could tell you more. Uh, but we don't even know. So um, we're going to be releasing it as soon as possible. Again, right up here in the upper right of our window here, everybody should be able to see my little arrow here now. I'm grabbing my highlighter friend. Uh, should be seeing the arrow there that confirms our version in the upper right of our Church Windows version 17 screen. I opened that in advance simply because when I did this the first time, folks were like, oh, is he doing anything? Is any, are we supposed to be seeing anything on the screen? So um, we're opening the, uh, the main screen for Church Windows on our version 17 preview webinars just so folks see what we're doing here. So just in the interest of letting you know that you know, if I close out of that using the X here in the upper right corner, I still upper left corner, I still have my you know, Church Windows icon up here, shortcut just like I would normally. Normally, and when I double click on it, I don't have any usernames or passwords set in the program or software. But if you do, when you install the update, you would get prompted to enter a username and password just like you would normally. And then when you click OK through that, um, it will simply open to the uh, main screen for Church Windows version 17. And as you can clearly see, maybe some of you attended some of these other um, version 17 preview webinars, the opening window for the software does look very different now here in our version 17. We've uh, taken the opportunity to I think really make it look very nice. Um, there are definitely some things here that you know probably weren't discussing. Uh, you know below the line all of our modules still exist here. You know so right below this line here in the center we still have access to membership and scheduler and donations and accounting, system administration, our access to the help uh, files and to a means of exiting the program, of course. One of the main things uh, changes here on the opening window for Church Windows is, of course, that our um, contact list, provided you have access to membership, either read-only or full access, the contact list can be accessed from the opening window for the software. You don't actually need to be in one of the modules or the programs in order to be able to um, access the contact list. Uh, phone list. Um, you know, so if we click on that, it just opens up our contact list right here, just like it would without having to necessarily go into membership or to, you know, donations or what have you. Okay, so notice it minimized that window, and as soon as I closed out of the contact list, it brought me right back to the main portal for Church Windows version 17 here. Um, most of these changes are, of course, due to the uh, we're now more than halfway through the rewrite right of Church Windows. Um, the you know, folks, this is going to you know, as you continue to attend these webinars over the course of the next few months or so, it's going to sound like a you know a badly broken record from us. Is you know, we're going to continue to reiterate that you know you have to have both donations and accounting enabled here in order to simply be able to install version 17 uh, when it's released. If you have either contributions and financial or accounting and contributions, um, you're going to get a message during the install process that says, hey, you know, we're still seeing you're working with those older versions of the program. Uh, you know, please convert to, you know, donations and accounting and then come back and try the install again. Okay. Um, so it's just one of those things that you know we're going to be continuing to reinforce over the course of the next couple of months or between now and the release of version 17. Uh, you know we're getting lots and lots of support calls from users 
uh, you know, who are now converting. You know, one of the things that uh, the powers that be here have sort of wanted us to make sure that we're explaining is, you know, if it's it's fine if you choose not to convert or if you're not in a position to convert to donations or accounting and you're still wanting to work with contributions and or financial, uh, so long as you're aware that you simply will receive the Church Windows Update CD from us for version 17, uh, but it will not be able to be installed until you or the church decides and actually takes the action uh, to make the you know to convert over to those um, new modules. Um, well, and they're new to you. They're not new, so new to us. Okay, as I've been telling a lot of folks here on support, is accounting has been out and available for users to convert to since 2008, and donations has been released was released in late 2011. So both of these modules, while they may be new to you, are not new to us. Okay. Um, so please, you know, if you've got questions about that, or you're still working with those, and you're you're you know you're hesitant about it. Uh, please don't hesitate to call us. You know, I, I talk with a handful of folks that are converting or preparing to convert every single day. So um, we've got, you know, lots of useful and helpful information for you, the website, etc. Okay. Um, I mean, if we click on, say, accounting or donations here, so if we launch accounting from the main screen for even version 17, for those of you who are working with accounting, you'll notice here that the opening screen or the portal or the main screen for accounting hasn't changed uh, in any way generally. Um, and when we close out to the main screen and we click on donations, the donations uh, portal or screen looks exactly the same as it has. I mean definitely there are some minor changes in these modules too. We've, we're having other webinars for the changes on those. Same is true for scheduler. When we click on the scheduler module it opens exactly like it does um, normally. Um, the bulk of the changes, of course, in version 17 are to our membership module. Okay, so when we click on membership, now notice we no longer get a menu. We get the membership portal, just like we did, you know, the, the accounting and the donations portals opening uh, with basically a, with several buttons, um, uh, that basically give us options for what we're wanting to do inside the membership module itself. Still we have the contact list in the lower right corner down here, down here, so we can still access that if necessary, okay, from within the membership module. Um, but all of these other functions or buttons take us to different parts of the membership module. And this is where again the most of the changes in version 17 are, are occurring. You know, we have access to the help module. You know, we can access our members database. So if we click on that, if we click on members, it opens up our members database. And we're really sort of off and running working with what we're traditionally used to seeing uh, in membership in our current version with the household record on the left, um, our individual records on the right, all of the buttons and things uh, across the top left here for various things we're wanting to do in the membership module up here. Um, uh, and the same is true when accessing the uh, visitors database that when we close out of that and we click on visitors it opens up our visitors. They're still separate databases. Um, when we click on attendance it opens up our attendance menu with our various options. Again these are these are really no different than in the versions uh, the current version of church windows that you're currently using for the attendance menu it's just now we've separated the attendance uh, menu or attendance entry menu from the main screen for membership. I mean really this is sort of carrying over into what how, how accounting and donations have been traditionally doing things which is uh, doing away with menus when and wherever possible. Okay we haven't been able to get away from them entirely um, but in in donations and accounting uh, there are just a handful of menus with you know a handful of items in each of them. There's generally multiple places we can go to get to things. Visits, same thing. If we click on visits, it's a separate, we access that separately from the other portions of membership. Our, again, accessing the help files in membership. Uh, then when we click on reports, here's again a menu, much like we're the one we're used to seeing here. Uh, you know, it is a menu. Here's our report directory export which is essentially your reports menu in member in the current version of membership. Do we want to just print labels? Do we want to send an email? And also under our, say, birth date report, these are some of our pre-formatted reports. 
birth date, anniversary, groups, classes, skills, interests. But notice as we hover over each one of those modules or, or menus, the, um, <clears throat> the options for either report directory or export, for a report essentially, you know, do we want to produce a report for our birth date list? Do we want to produce labels for those that you know that have birth dates in a particular period? Do we want to send them an email? And the same is true under our anniversary report, our groups and classes, skills and interests. So you know, while we're building in some features for you into each one of these pre-formatted options, you have the same functionality in all of those sections. Okay. So down here, when we look at attendance, this isn't the attendance entry menu. This is the attendance reports menu. So if you go to your current membership module and you go to reports, you'll see an attendance list there, which is going to reveal the summary by person, you know, the summary, you know, summary by event group class, attendance worksheet, and attendance report. Um, I still think we're going to be seeing some changes to these um, in future versions, even after version 17. Um, but for right now, this is really where the bulk of the changes are occurring um, in in these in the in the new version for us. The I think that the main thing that uh, oh, and our special functions menu too, of course, which currently has if you go to your membership uh, special functions in the current version, you'll still see you know settings, you know reset screen sizes, advanced school grade, all of those same functions that are in the current membership module are still here. It's just a matter of where. And, and how you access those, those modules um, or access those um, portions or functions of the software. Um, settings, when we click on that, is just like it is when you go to your you know, membership special functions settings in your, in your current version. Um, the main changes in the program are under membership and reports, essentially. There's a lot more reporting flexibility. Um, uh, if you were hoping that you're attending or logging on or registering for registering for keeping an eye out for some of these other version 17 webinars, uh, there's many of them that are talking in more detail about these reporting functions or reports functions that are changing in membership. Uh, the and they're an hour long, and so maybe some of you have already attended those. If not, we're going to continue to offer these over the course of the next couple of months until the release, and probably well after the release has occurred. Um, based on the new changes. Um, there are lots of things which are changing in this new version and we know that users are going to have a hard time or going to need some time getting adjusted to those as we are. You know, I am a support technician as well as trainer for Church Windows and as we continue to approach the release date for this version uh, whenever that occurs is I'm learning it in advance of the release so when you call me with questions as any of our technicians are uh, we're prepared to answer as many of those questions as possible. Um, so this, you know, welcome to the new uh, membership portal for Church Windows membership. And so when we click the red X to close out of that, it says exit membership. When we click yes, it immediately takes us back to our main portal for um, Church Windows. And so this is going to be the new screen, you know, still user friendly, friendly support with the icon version information and uh, all of the options under its under uh, system admin or what used to be system administration. We do see we've still got our backup data function here. Um, we also have the restore our system info access our access to security. You know, when we click on security, it opens up the same exact security window that you're seeing in the current version there. It's just accessed again differently from the main screen. Um, and uh, also our support functions here, which actually is becoming uh, less and less. You know, there's less here and being more done through the, the hidden behind the scenes that we have access to for you. Um, so essentially this is your repair and compact access databases. So the portions of the software which are still using access, they're getting fewer and fewer with each progressive version. Uh, you still have the database maintenance here. And here's the support password request. Um, so here's a location that only you know we can provide for you when you call into technical support. Uh, oh, that was interesting. I thought that would have taken us back. So here we are. We double click on the church windows icon and it relaunches our our main portal screen for you. 
Okay, so so just so everybody's aware, and if folks aren't aware of it, I didn't say it earlier, I'm sorry, this is not a released version of Church Windows. This is the new version of Church Windows that we're going to be releasing here in the next, in the next few months or so. Uh, Barbara's asking, do you have to have donations and accounting to upgrade? Yes. Both the opening window here has to say donations and accounting. Barbara, great question. Just as a reminder, it's, uh, you know, if you don't own those modules, the system will convert them for you automatically upon installation. If you don't and they're disabled or for some reason and you're not seeing those, please call technical support. We're happy to look at that with you. Dorothy's asking, will we have manuals to uh, for the new verse support this version? Absolutely. Uh, we'll be in upgrading the manuals um, to this to incorporate as many of the changes in the software as we possibly can. Great question. Yeah, Maggie, the, uh, that report certainly can be, you can create, there's actually a report designer and membership, and I'm going to encourage you to look or attend one of the other um, webinars, webinars that deals more with the, uh, in more detail with the reporting aspects of the new version 17. But you bet, it will be easy to be able to create these reports, including virtually anything you want. There's actually a report designer in, um, in the new version here. Uh, we hope to see you at another Church Windows uh, web, future church user group webinar web, uh, there. Please check the link at our website. Um, otherwise, thank you all so much. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.